up, you guys? Welcome to the March 12th edition of NBA 3 Ball, presented by Establish the Run. I'm your host, Mike Gallagher. Getting ready for 10 minutes of some basketball news, not that much of it, because I want to talk about the crazy Thursday night slate. But hit the thumbs up and subscribe, please, as we hit the news. Just real quick, I just want to talk Cleveland. Kevin Love practice, Darius Garland practice. They're questionable. It sounds like they got a good chance to come back. Larry Nance also said he will play. So suddenly this wacky rotation that was running out, Dean Wade, Lamar Stevens, and all those dudes, they're going to go away uh, with Larry Nance and Kevin Love coming back. Probably can expect JaVel McGee uh, to even go away here. So we know Love and maybe Nance will probably have some minutes caps on them. But certainly, guys, we could look to. No, also, obviously, trade candidates. This doesn't affect Jared Allen too much. Takes a little upside off of him, um, going from a little higher usage plays next to him. But certainly still believe Jared Allen's going to be a big-time player going forward. And also, just a kind of different spin on the news. Uh, the NBA is doing away with the games cap on G League two-way guys. So we found out that's going to be relevant because Thursday was so G League-y. <laughs> we'll talk about that as we get to the basketball. Going to start with kind of a newsy basketball and also a fun one with the Rockets losing, but P.J. Tucker sounds like his days are numbered because he wants to get traded to a contender. Kind of saw this coming along the way. Silas has been shady at times with the David Nawaba stuff, so it really wasn't a big surprise to me that he got kind of pulled out of this for a healthy scratch for trade reasons. And, oh baby, uh, well, I can't tell you how much time I've put content into Kevin Porter Jr. And he comes out and hangs a double-double, career-high 10 assists, 3 steals, a block, and a 3. 29 minutes, Eric Gordon pulls his groin. He's probably missing weeks, maybe months. It looked real bad. Um, so, man, I mean, Kevin Porter Jr., what a spot. If you picked him up, you should be feeling real good uh, about his outlook going forward. John Wall, kind of, you know, his afternoon got the questionable tag. 8.30 report, they ruled him out, didn't play. Was supposed to be cleared in back-to-back sets. So, I think maybe Eric Gordon got the okay. So, they were like, okay, we don't need Wall. Let's sit him today, play him tomorrow. So I think Wall would play, but Oladipo's probably going to sit. So it's still very much Kevin Porter Jr. season uh, on a team that's lost 14 straight, and they might as well play him to see if he could grow into this James Harden light role they want him to grow into. Not too much to say on the Kings. Halliburton had a minutes cap. Walton said he was going to cap him, only played him 18. Blowout there, so obviously Corey Joseph got, jo- Joseph got up there. Really, every starter uh, besides Marvin Bagley ha- had a pretty big game, so not much to take away from there. Um, as the Kings are reportedly sellers, so that's something to keep an eye on. Pretty good win for the Hornets, even against the Pistons. And man, just Rozier came on so late, hit so many big shots to get the win. Uh, Devontae Graham did return, was playing 5-6 to six minutes, stands only played 18 minutes. That'll come up, but man, just not enough meat left on the bone uh, for him to produce at a level that he was producing anywhere close to last year. Uh, Malik Monk predictably took a big hit. Miles Bridges, same thing. Um, and Biombo obviously too, but... Yeah, I mean, this is going to be pretty standard here. You're basically going to count on the starters, um, some more than others, obviously. The metal will probably be the best of the bunch. Uh, and then kind of mixing it up with, that, with the bench not carrying as much value. Pistons take the loss. As Dwayne Casey said after the game, he wanted to go 12 deep because of the All-Star break and kind of keep guys in better shape. Uh, Delon Wright obviously capped a little bit in his return from the groin injury. Dennis Smith Jr. is going to lose, lose a little bit of value. Saban Lee... Just saw kind of spot minutes at the end of the second quarter, so he's, you know, donezo. Uh, maybe they mix it up a little bit, but, you know, we're not going to be too encouraged, especially with Killian Hayes coming back. So both DSJ and Hammer are pretty easy drops uh, if you're looking to add anybody else. Sveen Mikhailu played great, so I wouldn't overly panic about how Josh Jackson didn't play well today because I think things are going to open up for him in the form of Wayne Ellington probably getting traded. So, you know, Josh Jackson will be all right, but uh, t- maybe a little bit quiet if Sveen keeps playing well. Let's get a win. Kyrie revenge game. 40 ball. I mean, yeah, he's really good. Uh, as is James Harden, despite not shooting the ball too, too well today. Jeff Green returned. Didn't really cut into Nick Claxton too much. And DeAndre Jordan saw a little bit of five. Not not enough to make you worry yet. But obviously, Blake Griffin coming back is going to make this front court situation a major mess, even with Kevin Durant still at least a couple games out. Celtics get Marcus Smart back. Right at his minute limit of 20 to 22 minutes at 21 for him. And really, the big man, it's going to be dicey here. I mean, Tristan Thompson played just 19 minutes. Tice still played 28. Robert Williams, only 17 minutes. But man, six blocks. If he could just stick to 20, it's going to be great. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, so certainly expecting to be you know, uh, a little up and down because uh, we know Brad Stevens is going to play those four guys 
so much that it'll affect kind of the rest of the secondary rotation pieces. Celtics get Marcus Smart back. Reddit his minute limit of 20 to 22 minutes at 21 for him. And really the big man, it's going to be dicey here. I mean, Tristan Thompson played just 19 minutes. Tice still played 28. Robert Williams only 17 minutes. But man, six blocks. If he could just stick to 20, it's going to be great. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, so certainly expecting to be you know, uh, a little up and down because uh, we know Brad Stevens is going to play those four guys so much that it'll affect kind of the rest of the secondary rotation pieces. Crazy comeback for the Hawks, capped by a Snelly Cat, Tony Snell, buzzer beating three, wildness. Uh, Trey Baller, Clint Capella smashed on uh, Aaron Baines and Chris Boucher. Gallo played really well. Really, the big negative here would be bogged up McDonald's playing 17 minutes. It's going to be real tough for him to kind of. Even with Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter, it's it's not going to be great for him to dominate because Trey is such a beast and he plays so many minutes too. So uh, he'll certainly be better. Wouldn't cut him for nobody, but definitely would prefer like Kevin Porter Jr. over Bogdan at this point. Raptors going to smash out of Chris Boucher with 29-9 and some defensive stats. But man, this is really the line coaches bowl. <laughs> Nate McMillan said that Bogdan was good after practice. He's mentioned the minutes limit. And Nick Nurse said he was going to play kind of hockey style rotations because of guys' minutes. Limits concerns after the break. Norman Powell, 39 minutes. Lowry, 39. Bembry, 37. Yikes. Um, they'll get guys back soon. But, yeah, Nor- I mean, Norman Powell, man, like, legit flirting with th- uh, 50-49 is just insane. He get the win with Alabama on a bye, who's out again on Friday. Ooh, boy. Uh, not great. Chris Silva played over Precious Achua. That's a little bit surprising. Casey with Paul got the start, got an early foul trouble, so we saw a little bit of Mo Harkless. But, obviously... Uh, it's going to be a lot of guard play and a lot of Kelly Lennox as Jimmy Butler is going to really, really carry this team. Good to see Hero get it going. But yeah, all these guards are going to be able to coexist and none Hero and Dragic. Lots of injury notes for the Magic. Aaron Gordon back hard capped at 14 minutes. Not surprising. Clifford said multiple times he won't play his guys big minutes returning from injury because he doesn't want an aggravation or something else going wrong. So not surprised there. Evan Fournier is still out with that groin. Terrence Ross also didn't play with a sore left knee. That's a little bit concerning. Magic losing some games here, uh, as we'll see Aaron Gordon start to ramp up a little bit. Uh, but surprised to see Michael Carter Williams play pretty well. That'll cut down a little bit as Gordon gets ramped up. The Ben Simmons and Embiidless Sixers smash on the Bulls, seventy-eight pain points uh, for them with Tony Bradley, Dwight Howard going off. Uh, even with Seth Curry not playing well, Tybal had five steals in the first half. Uh, Tobias looking like he was gonna have a big night. Quiet late, garbage time, uh, as the bench kind of did some damage. Uh, to take this game out of reach. Bulls get Laurie Marketing back. Played great. 23 points. Certainly got to be encouraged by that. Wendell Carter Jr. Only 15 minutes after the game. Billy Donovan said it was kind of foul trouble in the game getting out of hand. So don't panic. But as I said kind of previously, he's going to lose a little bit of value here uh, with Marketing and Otto Porter Jr. back. The Wolves go off against the bad Pelicans defense. Jalen Noel career high 28. Pack up point guard minutes. Just dominated this game offensively. And then... Man, guy I spend way too much time talking about. Jane McDaniels has his game of his life. 20 points, 3 blocks, 2 steals, 4 threes. This is what I'm talking about. Box threes, super active. He's their most talented non-cap big man. And it makes sense to play him. So, you know, I think add him. Hope the cream rises to the top and he can kind of ice out some dudes. Uh, Vanderbilt certainly capped for, phys- for for talent reasons. And obviously Jake Lemon and Wancho Hernan Gomez is out until garbage time too. So, uh, yeah, um, Jade McDaniels, man, a post-half breakout, I'm feeling it. Not much to say on the Pels, but honestly, like, watch out for those DMP rests today. Thunder, no Darius Baisley, and Alexei Pokashevsky gets the start, gets to the line four times, two blocks, looked way more polished after looking like a, a Bambi out there earlier in the season. Great, I mean, this is obviously not great news for Baisley, finally missed the game this season, uh, and also Moses Brown, monster G League numbers, in 26 minutes, almost like 20 and 15 uh, in just 26 minutes can block shots too. So, got talent. Uh, you know, they're going to probably keep playing him over Muscala. We know Horford's going to rest a little bit. So, Moses Brown, super deep league. I had him in my 30-man league. Um, and they're playing G League guys. They're going to play G League guys. This was the whole plan the whole time. So, this is this is not surprising. Uh, so, you know, Pokashevsky is a little bit of an ad. Not nearly a great ad, but... Uh, I think he may stay on the radar even when Baisley comes back. Quickly on the Mavs, no KP, no Luka, and Rick Carlisle said before the game, he is going to rest, guys, and it will be unannounced. So on the injury report, but we won't know until day of. So uh, big yikes. Uh, Josh Richardson, great game from him. 
Jalen Brunson predictably has a strong game. No surprises there. Only other late stuff uh, would be the Warriors. Uh, Big Jim, James Weissman getting benched uh, for missing a COVID test, which I kind of hinted at in the content today. Uh, And also, Kerr mentioned after the game that he will get Weissman's mints to go up. So this is kind of over with. Uh, And he also said he's committed to Nico Mannion, Jordan Poole, and Weissman in the second unit going forward. Very noteworthy stuff there. Uh, with Poole over leapfrogging Wanamaker and Poole playing pretty well uh, overall, certainly not a guy you're going to be excited to play. Um, but yeah, this is this is relevant um, for especially if you're in a deep league streaming and all that good stuff. Let's get to the ads and the only other guy that's worth mentioning for the late games is Dario Sarge taking minutes from DeAndre Ayton. Big yikes for Ayton. Uh, wouldn't panic though. Um, yeah, so ads. Kevin Porter Jr. Obviously, like uh, <laughs> Jade McDaniel's. I wouldn't leave him on the waiver wire if your leagues. Deep enough, and you have anybody to cut. I just think he's too talented. Uh, KJ Martin, besides the Kevin Porter Jr. stuff, uh, he's certainly a guy that benefits here. Uh, Moses Brown, I think he's really interesting. Uh, I think that they're going to go really G League heavy, and I think Muscala is a thing of the past. Obviously, if Horford gets traded, Moses Brown is a stat monster in the G League. Love to see it. Uh, Pokashevsky, a little bit more worried about his playing time going forward when Basie comes back. Then Moses Brown, Jalen Noel should be really productive until we get Jordan McLaughlin back. And then the Warriors guards are in the rotation now with Jordan Poole and Nico Mannion. That's it. We'll catch you guys next time.